Welcome back. One of the next stories in our countdown made a lot of Guamanians reflect on their stance with the federal government. And another dealt with a massive problem at the Department of Corrections. In 2017, Governor Eddie Cavill made this surprising announcement during a Rotary Club meeting in April. Myself, I and my administration will no longer support the buildup. The reason? Governor Eddie Cavo said the federal government had a stranglehold on the island's economy. He cited as an example the denial of the H-2B visas, which has seen a drastic drop in recent years. The dire situation prompted the Guam Contractors Association and more than one dozen local businesses to take Uncle Sam to court. I'm requesting the Attorney General enjoin in the lawsuit with the contractors. As far as I'm concerned, it is a clear and present danger to our island economy. That lawsuit is continuing to move through the federal court with the feds, making it clear it has no intention of settling the case. And while the governor denounced his support, the military continued to move forward. With the long-planned relocation of thousands of Marines from Okinawa, signing a $165 million contract to prepare the site of a new 400-acre Marine base in northern Guam, Major Tim Patrick is spokesman for Marine Corps Activity Guam. This project right now is huge because it, lets, it gets us ready uh, to get the, the vertical part of the base going. That wasn't the only military contract signed in 2017. The feds inked a $78 million contract awarded to Black Construction to build a firing range in northern Guam. This prompted Prutehi Latexan to hold multiple protests, including forming a human chain to block entry into Anderson Air Force Base. This resulted in the arrest of a staffer employed by a local senator. It also led to an ethics complaint filed against a separate lawmaker who joined in the protest. Call the base command. The ethics complaint was eventually dismissed. As the island celebrated Mesh Chamorro, Guam's vote on political status was effectively stopped with a decision handed down by District Court of Guam Chief Judge Francis Hedinko Gatewood that determined local law related to the vote on self-determination was unconstitutional. The decision was based on a 2011 lawsuit filed by Arnold Dave Davis against the Guam Election Commission. Six years ago, he was prohibited from registering on Guam's political status because local law only allows native inhabitants or descendants of one who was naturalized under the Organic Act in 1950 at Rio register and vote in a plebiscite. Davis argued his constitutional rights were violated. Following the decision, a rally was held on the front lawn of Adaloop. The purpose of the gathering is for every, uh, all the Samoros, non samoros to get together um, just to recognize uh, our rights as Samoro people and for our uh, uh, community of Guam, our non samoros to stand in solidarity with us. Following the decision, Guam Attorney General Elizabeth Barrett Anderson filed a notice of appeal. Meanwhile, in October, another blow was dealt by the feds as the Justice Department filed a lawsuit to prohibit the Chamorro Land Trust Commission from refusing applications based on race or national origin. The Justice Department alleges the CLTC law is discriminatory and violates the Federal Fair Housing Act. The AG reacted, saying she plans to take the fight to preserve the Chamorro Land Trust Act to the highest court necessary. Barrett Anderson was actually the appointed attorney general more than 25 years ago who argued against suit brought by the late Senator Angel Santos to force implementation of the Land Trust Act. And when the law was eventually implemented, Barrett Anderson was a senator who supported enactment. Well, that was my job 26 years ago. My job today as the elected attorney general is to fight for the laws of Guam and our trial court has upheld this particular act and I am going to defend the act as far as I possibly can. The agency tasked with locking up criminals found itself locking up several of their officers. This year, multiple officers at the Department of Corrections, inmates, detainees, and others in the community were arrested and indicted in a major scheme to sneak contraband into the Manilao compound. One of the accused was the top person in charge of investigating officers accused of misconduct, DOC's Head of Internal Affairs, Lieutenant Jeffrey Limo. With at least 30 active investigations into contraband, GPD took over the IA investigations. The entire ordeal questioned question the integrity of the department. It's a sad day for DOC, uh, but you know the reality is is we need to let the judicial process take its course. Um, but we also don't condone uh, any illegal activities. The bust at DOC was the result of ramped up efforts by the Guam Police Department's Mindanao Drug Task Force. It doesn't matter whether it's a stick of cigarette 
or whether it's crystal methamphetamine, if it's not allowed to be possessed by an inmate at the Department of Corrections for whatever reason, it's considered contraband and we will treat it accordingly. The contraband cases are still moving through the judicial system. Well, can you guess what our number one story of the year is? We'll tell you after the break. But first, Instagram. Here are the IG posts you reacted to most these past 12 months.